welcome you on this second Sunday of Advent, which is also a Communion Sunday. As you'll see, our mitten tree has sprouted some new mittens and hats and scarves and neck warmers, and it will continue to grow and grow throughout the course of our Advent season. So if you have anything to donate to our mitten tree, please drop it off in the church Monday mornings between 9.30 and 11, or a week this Monday in the evening between 6.30 and 7.30. Also let you know that we are still doing Christmas hampers this year, and so if you would like to offer a monetary donation to the Outreach Council for Christmas hampers, they are also being accepted at the church. Uh, drop them in the mailbox, mail it in, snail mail, e-transfer, whichever way is the most convenient for you. Those donations are gratefully accepted as we continue to offer that ministry even in the midst of all that's happening in the world. And so we come together on this second Sunday of Advent across the miles, a community that is separated and yet still community, bringing our hearts, our troubles, our concerns, our joys together in community. Let us worship God together. We light this candle of peace this day, knowing that there are so many places in the world where peace is but a dream. As we move towards the coming of love incarnate into the world, let us work towards peace in our lives and in the world, and that we might open our hearts to you so that the peace that lives in you might come into our lives. God of Advent, you have called us together to be peacemakers. During this Advent season, help us to be attentive to one another. Be with us to comfort us and allow us to bring comfort to others. Let our hearts be filled with your peace as we flatten the rough places and straighten the curved paths in our lives and community. We pray in the name of the one whose coming we await, Christ our Savior. Amen.
us pray. God of peace, we look at our world today and all we see are wilderness places. In our lament we cry, help, we need some peace right now. We need to stop rattling sabers at each other and try to talk things out. Where is God in all of this mess, we cry. About the only response we can offer is, God is right here in our midst, working for peace and justice. We forget to look for you in acts of justice and kindness, in moments of reaching out to help without expecting something in return. This is where you dwell, God. In times when people feel lonely and marginalized, when they are lost and alone, there you are, God, extending the embrace of welcome and fellowship. Yet, holy and loving God, we so often have dwelt in darkness and preferred it to the light. We have been proud of our accomplishments and despaired over our shortcomings. Smooth down the mountains of our pride and lift up the valleys of our doubts. Open a path in the wilderness of our lives that we might find our way to you again. Find our way to peace. Refine us and prepare us once again for life in your kingdom. places in which we walk, the streets we roam, the paths we cross. We know that you guide our feet, take us to places where you would go. You continue to pour the blessings of your mercy and forgiveness down on us. Give us words that you would use that in this Advent season of promise and preparation, we might point the way with John the Baptist to the coming Messiah to the greatest of your blessings to be shared with all the world. Amen. So, quite often in life, we, uh, we have this idea that we know where we need to go and we know the we have an idea of the path that we have to take to get there. But quite often, as is the case right now, as you can see, um, we run into obstacles in our path that make it not always that easy to get where we think we need to go or where we're trying to get to. And, and out here in the wilderness, in the forest, you'll see that although I knew I needed to go from there to here, it wasn't necessarily a straightforward path, and there were obstacles that I needed to get over and through, and that's the same thing in life, is that quite often we, we know where we need to go, we know where we want to get to, we know what's important, we know where our destination is, but we also know that the reality is that there's always some kind of obstacles and roadblocks that make it challenging for us to get there. In our lives today, there are so many challenging roadblocks. There are so many things that, that make it difficult for us to get to where we know we need to be or where we know we want to be, where we know um, that we should be. But how do we get there in the midst of all of the obstacles that we need to make our way over and get through and that's part of what we're going to be talking about today is what are those obstacles where is our path and where do we need to get to you know once again we find ourselves out in this forest and it's a good metaphor for what's happening in our world right now and our life today and so think about that think about where you think you want to be what's important what you want to eventually come to 
and then we'll recognize and, and identify and lift up some of those obstacles and what helps us navigate the terrain of our life right now to get us to where we need to be. Okay, we'll see you again next time. says your God. Speak tenderly, tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fade. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flowers fades, but the, world, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will field his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. Our second reading this morning is from Mark 1, verses 1 to 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance and for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole world, from the whole Judean countryside, and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Amen. So we now find ourselves on this second Sunday of Advent. It's a time when, if we follow the traditional themes of Advent, we talk about peace. What is peace? That's a question that I have thought about for a long time. For some, they see peace as a time when there is no fighting, no war, no conflict, no violence. 
And yet for others, they see peace as not just an absence of conflict, but rather a time where the presence of justice and equality is, is there. Or is peace something more personal? Is peace a time of, of calmness? Or is it a time when we let go of all of those things that we struggle with in our lives? And I think that each one of us, if we were to think about it and to describe what peace might mean to each of us, we would all have our own understanding of peace. What does peace mean? And what does it mean for us to have peace or to live with peace in our lives? And what do these ideas of peace have to do with our Advent theme of in the wilderness? I think that today it might do well for us to look at the readings starting with the Gospel of Mark. This Gospel begins almost as if Mark has come to the party late. He's come to the story halfway through. Mark begins with John the Baptist in the wilderness calling out for the repentance of sins, and then proceeds quickly from there to the baptism. This isn't really a Christmas story, and yet here we are in the second week of Advent with this seemingly crazy prophet who's out in the wilderness yelling at the people about the repentance of sins and the coming of one who will baptize with fire. But in reality, for many of us, that's where we are in our lives, aren't we? We're all in a wilderness place at this time. And so this reading might just be appropriate for this second Sunday of Advent. Because we have been living in this wilderness time for a while now, and we don't know when it might actually end. And so the first reading, or this reading from Mark's Gospel, is a reading that is calling out from the wilderness, calling for repentance and new life. And then the reading from Isaiah. The reading from chapter 40, which we begins with, Comfort, O comfort my people. See, chapter 1 to 39 of Isaiah is all doom and gloom. It's all about judgment. And a little bit in that judgment, it parallels very much Mark and John the Baptist in the wilderness calling for repentance. Those first 39 chapters of Isaiah, known as 1st Isaiah, speak to this coming of judgment on Jerusalem. But in chapter 40, the one we heard this morning, it all changes. Because this chapter speaks to those who lived through the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem, the end of David's line of kings, and now they find themselves in bondage in Babylon. But the reading doesn't speak to those things. No, it speaks to hope. It speaks to the coming of God offering comfort and peace to the people. It speaks again to this unseen yet longed for, looked for future. It speaks to God's presence with the people in the midst of all of those things in their lives with which they were struggling. It speaks to all of those things in their lives, all of those things that they had been through, all of those things that have stopped them from being in relationship with God. And it speaks to a time when the people, although they have struggled, will be at peace with God. You see, the people of ancient Jerusalem had not been what God had wanted them to be. The people had been setting up proverbial roadblocks between themselves and God that stopped them from becoming the people that God had challenged them to be. And now they find themselves far away 
escape from home, separated, isolated, alone, and afraid. They were separated from their God and from their community, and they had lived, they had in their lives these roadblocks to peace, peace with God, peace with themselves. It speaks once again very much to our lives today. As I and others have said many times, we are living in an unprecedented time, a time when there are so many things that can become roadblocks to peace in our lives. The stress, the anxiety, the loneliness, fear, violence and strife. We live in a world that seems to be overwhelmed by all that has happened. And yet, in the midst of the wilderness of that place, God calls us to a place within God's presence, a place of peace. So I'll be honest with you, as I was preparing for this meditation, my mind kept going to Frank Costanza, played by Jerry Stiller, the late Jerry Stiller, the, who played the father of George Costanza on the television show Seinfeld. Because you see, in one episode, Frank is given a way to relax, a way to find peace in his life when things are out of control. He was to say, Serenity now. Now in the show, given Frank's personality, this mantra became something quite different. It became a parody, as it was a mantra that was yelled quite forcefully throughout the show, Serenity Now! Although this mantra was supposed to be about finding peace, it became, in my opinion, a huge parody of peace in the midst of the hectic world in which we live. But that's what it was supposed to be, a parody. And I've been wondering about that. Because what does it mean for us to find peace in the world? What does it mean for us to find serenity now? With all the roadblocks that seem to be in front of us. We truly are living through a wilderness time. Just as the ancient Israelites found themselves in a wilderness time in Babylon, just as John called out from that wilderness place, and yet in the midst of that God calls us to a place of peace. It may not be peace in the world as we imagine it, but rather peace of the Spirit. The reading from Isaiah speaks to God making a way in the wilderness, with the valleys being raised up and the hills brought down low. In the midst of the roadblocks of our lives, is God saying to us sometimes, very quietly, comfort, O oh, comfort my people offering us a peace that cannot be found in the world, but rather a peace of the Spirit in the midst of this wilderness time. Peace in knowing that God knows what we're going through, that God is with us, that even though we may not see it, may not know it, may not recognize it, that God is making a path for us in the wilderness. We are called to trust in God's presence. To trust in God's presence because in reality, that is what we are celebrating. We are joyfully waiting the coming of God's presence in the world. If we remember in this Advent time in the wilderness that God came to be among us, that God is always, has always, and will always be.
be with us. That maybe in the midst of each of our wilderness places in our own lives, we can truthfully say, Serenity now. And maybe those roadblocks of loneliness, fear, anxiety, stress, strife, war, and conflict might not seem so insurmountable, but rather manageable as God plots our path through the wilderness. For we must remember God truly is with us, for we are never alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs> Christ's table. And even though 
we recognize that there are roadblocks blocks in our lives and, and roadblocks in this wilderness time and, and roadblocks to peace and connection in the midst of those roadblocks. We are still called to come to Christ's table. And as we come to this table, we are reminded that this table is the table of Jesus Christ, a banquet prepared for everyone. All who seek to be nourished and sustained in the journey of faith, all who seek wholeness and compassionate paths to peace and justice are welcome here. So God be with you and, and also, also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift our hearts in prayer. prayer. Let us give thanks to God. It is good to give God thanks and praise. Let us pray. Blessed are you, breath of peace, giver of all life, source of love that knows no boundaries. Your song of wisdom rang out before the world began. Throughout the ages, your song of liberation has impregnated us with your hope for a world where those considered least and last are first and the most where violence is overcome by the power of your ancient love and all siblings work together for peace. You bring our longings to birth and send prophets to awaken us to the approaching advent among us. We thank you for those who, like Mary, had the strength and courage to give birth to your love in the world. For those who, like the shepherds, dared to seek out the child of Bethlehem, for those who, like the wise ones, actively challenged violent and oppressive powers. We praise you that your everlasting light is shown to us in womb and tomb, in cradle and cross, in tenderness and compassion. We join in the Advent prayer of all your people, O come, Emmanuel. And as we wait and watch for your coming among us, we proclaim your goodness.
church and its many ministries, for nations as they strive for peace and justice, for an end to violence against women and all people. God of hope, make this bread the means of our rebuilding, and this wine the medium of our transformation. At this table, the foundation for our renewal, and this community, the place of our rebirth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of life, the lifeblood of Christ, the cup of blessing. Let us eat and drink together for our strengthening in the faith and for the sake of the world. The bread of life.
We thank you, God, for breaking into our world, for pouring into our lives your mercy, grace, compassion, love, and peace. We thank you, God, for this meal of thanksgiving and for the stories of your love, grace, and hope that it tells. Amen. I invite you to join us once again in song as we sing our closing hymn, Put Peace Into Each Other's Hands. Amen. Mm -hmm. 